So I was looking around on YouTube and I found Peter McKinnon's tutorial for After Effects. And then I thought, Anything you can do, I can do better. So basically he's using After Effects to make a uh, sepia toned intro. And I believe we can do that with the power of fusion. So I cut my little sequence up here. With the power of fusion, we're gonna make what Peter McKinnon did in his After Effects tutorial. So with this sequence here, it's a bunch of chopped up little parts. I'm gonna turn this into a compound clip. So now that whole sequence is one clip. I'm gonna go to fusion. Now don't be scared of fusion, it's easier than you think. So the first thing we need to do, according to my notes, is cut the scene. We did that. Add film grain. Easy enough. Control space. Film grain. There's two of them. We'll use this one. If you hit grain only, you can see the grain. We're going to turn this texture up a bit. Grain size. Strength, so it's gritty. How does that look? Pretty grainy. Next thing we're gonna do, according to the notes, is tint it. Now, Fusion doesn't have a tint per se, but it does have control space, color, compressor. I'm gonna add the color compressor here. And our target color is going to be sepia. Just the color. It's pretty sepia. Okay. Got the film grain. We got the color compressor. I'm going to add directional blur. And we're going to go linear. And length. 180 degrees. That's pretty blurry, eh? Now we're gonna add a mask to this blur, which is easy enough. Drag this ellipse down. Connect that guy to this guy. We're gonna invert it. We're gonna drag these here, like so. We're gonna soften the edge like that. nice little blur around our scene here now what's next film grunge we're gonna grungify it this grungy loop I found on the internet put that in one so you see it make some space um, kind of just iterates around so we're gonna add that on top of everything. And the way we gotta do it first is we gotta invert the colors. So we're gonna go control space, invert. Put that on one, just like so. And then we're gonna add a color curve. So essentially what we're doing, we're turning this black and white and we're making a, uh, a mask. Anything black is gonna show through, white is gonna be blocked. And we'll see what that and we'll merge this to there. Okay, we got our uh, grungy overlay type looking thing over it. And then we're gonna add something from Res Resolve, Control Space, Film Damage. What this is gonna do is, it's gonna add dirt and scratches. You can add a bunch more scratches if you wish. This whole thing is subjective, so Whatever you want to do, you can do. It's easy. Um, so, so far we have uh, our media coming in, put grain on it, we put a blur on it, we tinted it, we're merging it into this uh, this over this filmic overlay, and then we're applying film damage. Uh, one other thing we did here for the logo see how it sizes up and inverts 
I want to invert just like the last couple frames of this. And you're going to ask yourself, how do you do that with a node-based in Fusion? Well, I'll tell you how. Control space, invert, color. Just like that. So we got one, two, three, four. So about four frames is all I want. And how I'm going to turn this off and on is with keyframes. So we're going to go to our invert. And we're already on the frame we want it to start. So we'll go make sure I have the right one. Invert color one. Invert color two is what I'm looking for. Turn that down to that frame. One, two, three, four. And we'll this to that frame then I'm also gonna turn everything off while it transitions into this um, logo area so we'll turn frame film grain off color compressor off directional blur off oh, that merge off Film damage off. And that should be good. Yeah, perfect. So we're done with the keyframes for now. So, so far we had a grungy pickup going into uh, a couple different scenes. And a little logo pop pop see what pop to get that filmy that film matte overlay it looks like a like a projector with the film not tracking correctly I'm gonna put it on this frame here so we're gonna add uh, this guy here and what this is it's just a it's just an image find it off the internet it's got a transparency layer and then we're gonna merge that into our scene here so how would you how would you do that you click here merge it in there now you see it's way the wrong size so we're gonna resize it just with one of these and it resizes it down to the size we need so then I want to transform it um, as this whole little group outputs to the media output. And to get that filmy looking uh, offset, uh, we don't need an offset tool like Peter used in his uh, After Effects. So we're, all we have to do is drag the Y up or down whichever see how it moves the whole group and then instead of edges we'll do wrap so it's like a, a carousel here and you just pick a frame you pick it down to here we're only gonna be like five frames of this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keyframe the move advance a few frames and then move this a little advance a few frames move this a little this will give it kind of a jiggle as it's moving and that's all I want and then it starts to transition so I'll move it back to where it was and one more little thing on top of this um, we'll add a uh, a flicker control space flicker flicker addition and we're gonna change the speed to a lot and again this is all subjective so you can add a million nodes and and go crazy turn that off we'll go to one screen make this bigger so I and I only want them on these frames 
So this is about the end of that film roll. Let's go to the keyframes again. Make some room. So you see it comes down, wiggles a little bit. Wiggle, wiggle, goes back. Wiggle, wiggle, goes back. With a little sound design, you'll get something like this. Wasn't that sweet? So, After Effects isn't just the only thing. If you have DaVinci Resolve 18 or 17, you can do the same thing everyone else can do in After Effects. Leave a comment in below if you see any other After Effects tutorials you'd like me to transform into uh, DaVinci Resolve tutorials. I believe uh, Resolve and Fusion are the most powerful software out there. So if you have any questions, let me know.